Okay, hi everyone. I'm just making a quick video here just to uh, go over something that I know some of you find quite difficult to do and nevertheless it is something very, very important uh, that you know how to do and that is making a chord map or a chord grid um, for your backing chords to accompany your melody. Okay, um, so the first thing you need to be absolutely clear on and sure on is your key signatures. Okay, so at junior cycle level there are five major keys that you need to know. C major, G major, D major, F major, and B flat major. You absolutely need to know the key signature for those keys. Just to recap over that, so the way you know them and, and what you need to memorize, this piece of information at the start, at the start of every piece of music, you'll have a clef, usually a treble clef, and immediately to the right of that, you'll have your key signature. If you see no sharps or no flat signs here, you are in the key of C major. Again, this is all backed up on Google Classroom and the handouts we've done in class. This is a, a reminder, a little quick revision. If you see, um, again, one flat sign at the start, that's the key of F major. And if you see two flat signs at the start, a B flat and an E flat, that is the key of B flat major. Okay? So you, you, you need to know this. So key of C major has no sharps, no flats. Key of F major has one flat, B flat. The key of B flat major has two flats, B flat and E flat. And then the sharps, if you see one sharp at the beginning, and it will always be F, and it's very important as well that the, the, the sharp sign, uh, that the main body of the sharp sign goes through that line there. It has to be really clear where you're placing the sharp sign. You can't just place it at the, at anywhere on the stage. If you see one sharp at the, uh, at the beginning, that's an, an F sharp, the key would be G major. And finally, if you see two sharps at the beginning, it's the key of D major. Okay. You must know this, and the remainder of this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you have memorized this. I know it's difficult, like sometimes it can be difficult to kind of uh, to understand it, but if you are having trouble understanding it, you need to memor you need to know this information. Okay. Uh, I know nowadays we kind of put an emphasis on different ways of learning. But sometimes there is no excuse or not, nothing better than just sitting down and knowing this information. Okay, I'm removing this now. You have this in notes. It's up on Google Classroom as well. We've gone through this many times in class. So let's start off by writing out a chord map in the key of C major. So the first thing I need to know to write out my chord grid is what the notes in the scale of C major are. So first of all, if I've looked at my piece of music, in, whether it's in an exam or whether I'm composing a piece in class, I look at the very start and I see what is the key signature. If there are no sharps and no flats at the beginning in the key signature, I know I'm in the key of C major. There is potentially another key we could be in. We could be in the relative minor key, which is A minor, but that's not to concern you now. Right now, if you see no sharps, no flats at the beginning, you know you're in the key of C major. The scale of C major is what we then write out. The scale of anything starts with the note that it's named after. So the scale of C major starts with the note C. Okay, you then carry on upwards. C, D is the next note. Follow the alphabet until you get to G. Once you get to G, you, you return back to A. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we stop there because at that point we're back to C. You don't write the first note again. You don't write the first letter again at the beginning, at the end there. Okay, they are the notes in the key of C, C major. You know, if we were in a different key, for example, if we were in the key of G major, we would put a, a sharp sign beside the F. You then, a good habit to get into is take note of what the first, third, and fifth notes are in that scale. That will actually make up the chord of C major. C, E, G. The first, the third, and the fifth note of any major scale will make up what we call the tonic triad. I then start another line of notes. I'm basically going to write out the scale again, but starting at a different point. So I'm going to start E here, okay, because that's the third note. I'm taking a note on the third note. E, F, G, A, B, C, 
D. And I then put a further line along the top here, beginning with the fifth note of the scale. G, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay? So that is the chord map for the key of C major there. Okay, now more to do. Um, but again, the first line is the major scale in its entirety, starting on Do, starting on the tonic note. I then write out the same scale again, starting on the third note, and the same scale again, starting on the fifth note. I know what some of you are confusing, are getting mixed up about is, um, some of you are starting to say this, starting on the third note of the scale here on the second line, which is the note E, and then writing out the scale of E. Now, for those of you who played music before, that would, there would be four sharps in that key signature. But you're not. You're still writing out the scale of C, just starting out on the, different, uh, on the third note of the scale, and then starting out on the fifth note of the scale. We then, underneath that grid, and I, I like to write a line there, underneath that grid there, we're going to give, we're going to name each of these chords. So this column of notes here, these various columns, and I can actually, if you want, you don't need to do this just for ease of demonstration here. I'm going to put them each in a kind of, in, in a box here. So this column here is a chord. These three notes here make up a chord. Right? This is a chord, a chord, a chord. So we have seven chords there in, in, this, in this chord map. And we're going to call them, we're just going to number them first of all. We're going to call this first chord, chord one. This one, chord two, chord three, chord four. You get the idea, okay? But we're going to use Roman numerals. We're not just going to write the number one here as we would typically know it. And we're going to use two different types of Roman numerals. Think of this as kind of capital letters and small letters. We're going to use large Roman numerals, small Roman numerals. Okay. So the first chord, we're going to use a capital, a big Roman numeral one. The reason for this is it is a major chord. Right? Is, it, is it a happy sounding chord, if you like? Okay. But it is a major chord. Chord. In a chord map or in any key, in any major scale, chords one, four, and five are major. Okay, so I'm, uh, chords two, three, and six are minor. So I use small Roman numerals for them. Okay, just two I's if you like. Okay, chord three is also minor. Chord four, as we said, is major. So you use capital Roman numerals for that. Chord five is major. Chord six is minor. Right. Not that one note too many there. Six. And then chord seven is what we call a diminished chord. E, I, I, with a little circle up there to notes that it's a diminished chord. Now I know some of you might watch this tutorial and you might have come across this in class and you're going, oh, I don't, I don't get what, what's he talking about a diminished chord here. Don't worry about that because we don't use chord seven in junior cycle level. Okay, neither do we use chord three. So you can move it out chord three there. It's it's just not on your syllabus. It's a nice it's a nice chord. Chord three can actually be nice in certain chord sequences. And um, as can chord seven. Um, it's a little bit trickier to get chord seven to fit into your melodies at, at this level. Chord three can be nice, but you're just not expected to know at this stage. So cross it out. Do like put it into your chord map when you're doing. Okay, and then just excluding that. And then one more row of information. This is, the, this, this is what these chords are called using Roman numerals. I'm also going to give you the kind of the chord, um, the chord name itself underneath that. So the chord is always named after what we call the root note of the chord. The root note is the lowest note of the chord. So the root note in this chord here is C. The root note in this chord is D. The root note is here is E, F, G, A, B, and so on. Okay, the only thing we need to distinguish is whether or not the chord is major or minor. The first chord here is a major chord, so it's called this chord is actually called C major. We don't make any reference to the word major here, we don't write the word major, we don't write a small m or anything like that. If it's major, we just call it by its letter name. So this chord is C, C major, we just write C. The next chord, the root note again, because it is the lowest note in the chord, and that's D. But this is a minor chord. The notes D, F, and A make up the chord of D minor. And in any major scale chord map, chord two will always be minor. And we have to indicate that it's a minor chord by putting a small M afterwards. Don't use a capital M, it must be a small M. So a capital D and a small M, and that denotes D minor. 
The next chord, even though we don't use it, chord three, we're still going to actually, uh, we're still going to um, name it. The next chord is E minor, because three is minor. Next one's chord four and five, they're both major, so we just call them after their root note, F in this case, G in this case. And then chord six is minor, so we use capital A and we have to put a small M afterwards. And chord seven is B diminished, okay? You can just put a circle in the top right corner indicated diminished, or the letters D, I, M. Uh, however, we're not gonna use chord seven. And that is how you create a chord map for C major. Very important as you go along that you, you can pause this video as you've been going along to use it. Um, like don't feel that you have to keep up in real time if it's confusing to stop. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna do a chord map for the scale of B flat major, for the key of B flat major. And I'm deliberately using that key because a chord map, no matter what key you're writing your chord map in, the process is the same. Some people get intimidated when they see lots of sharps and lots of flats at the beginning, but there's no reason to, it's, it's exactly the same. So don't be intimidated by it, okay? So let's say, first of all, I look at a piece of music, and at the beginning, I see this as my key signature. Two flats, B flat and E flat, okay? If you see two flats at the beginning of your key signature, they will always be B flat or E flat. So two flats, I know because I've learned that two flats means I'm in the key signature of B flat. I then, first of all, write out the notes in the key of B flat major. So what I'm going to do here is, and different people have different approaches, so I'm going to write out B, C, D, E, F, G, A. I am literally going to write from B back up to B, an octave of those notes there. Okay, and afterward, and now I'm going to add in, uh, I'm going to go to the third note and the fifth note, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, and the fifth note of the scale, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Okay, and very importantly now, I probably should have been doing this as a go along, different people do this differently. I add in my two flats. So anywhere I see a B or an E, I made that a flat. There we go. Okay, so in the key of B flat major, anytime you see a B, it's actually B flat, it becomes B flat, and anytime you see an E, it becomes E flat. I then draw my line underneath my chord map there, and I number them using Roman numerals. So chord one is major, so it gets a capital one. Chord two is minor, so it gets a small two. Chord three is minor. Chord four is major. Chord five is major. Chord six is minor. Chord seven is diminished. I get rid of chord three, I get rid of chord seven because we're not gonna use them, they won't arise. And then underneath it, I write in the name of the chord itself. So chord one is major, so the root note is B flat, so I just call it B flat because it's B flat major. Chord two is minor, okay, the root note is C. So I write C and a small m to denote C minor. Chord three, the root note is D, and it's a minor chord, so I put D minor on it. Chord four is major, the root note is E flat, so I just call that E flat. Chord five is major, it's chord F here. Chord six is minor, and chord seven is diminished. And that is how I write out the chord map in um, uh, the key of B flat major. The, the process is the exact same as if you were doing C major. Don't get intimidated by, um, by, by, by lots of flats. And our sharp start key signature. And um, also, please make sure that you use a chord map for every single um, uh, exercise you want to take here. Anytime you're writing chords or coming up with a chord, you, you must write out a chord map. It doesn't matter how good you are at, um, at chords, always write a chord map before you, uh, before you approach this question. Okay, guys, email me if you have any questions about that, and I hope this was helpful. Okay, see you now. Bye.